Hi, this is Clutch and this is the truth of love. Today's topic, the lie they tell themselves. So the number one question I have been getting on the Discord has to do with dumpers. What is the dumper thinking? What is the dumper going through? And of course, we've all heard about the stages of grief and this is for the most part an emotional grieving process that the dumpy tends to go through. But the dumper tends to go through a very different state, set of stages. And I wanted to go through each one of these and talk about the psychological implications of it. And then of course, talk about what the eventual resolution tends to be. So the very first thing that your ex is going to feel right after a breakup is a huge sense of relief. They have been thinking about this for some time. And of course they have gone through with this process. And the first thing they're gonna go through is a giant weight being lifted off their shoulders. Um, usually what will happen in times of large periods of separation, for example, is if um, you and your ex, let's say, are separated for a large period of time, let's say you go away for work, or they tend to go out with their girls to a specific vacation, or got a boy's night out, uh, or boy's weekend at the cottage, usually that separation will cause a sort of a predeterminant on the breakup. And usually it's short enough um, to feel a sense of relief, yet long enough to really concrete in their mind that they really want to go through with this breakup. So this initial sense of relief is more to do with the concept of the grass is being greener syndrome, where now all of a sudden I am not only free to explore these options, I feel a sense of relief because I'm no longer obligated to a person that I felt at that given moment in any ways was below me. And of course, the notion of someone being below you that you've dated is completely a paradox. Um, you wouldn't be with this person if you didn't see them as an equal at a certain point. But this is, of course, the first stage that the dumpy tends to go or the dumper tends to go through whenever they are going through that process. The second is eliation. Um, obviously, going through that process um, allows them to feel a high sense of ego, a high sense of value, because of course, this concept is now they're free to do everything. And of course, they want to go do everything. So they might start going out and dating other people. They might start going out and partying with other people. And this stage tends to last anywhere from a number of weeks to a number of months, depending on the attachment style of the particular person. Particularly um, people that tend to be more avoidant on the scale. Um, this stage can actually last several months. If not, in certain cases, I've even heard several years. So the idea of someone going through this process of eliation where they can basically go out and explore the world and regain their self-value is an important step for the dumper because this sort of reinforces that lie that they've told themselves. And what is the lie exactly? The lie is that for one reason or another, they didn't see themselves with you. So of course, during the initial stages, they're telling themselves this lie. They're saying, this person's bad for me. This person doesn't treat me with respect. And by no means am I saying in, in certain cases where you weren't treated with level of respect or in cases where let's say you were abused, emotionally, psychologically, or God forbid, physically, um, that you don't have a right to leave that relationship. You definitely do. This specific um, five, these specific five stages that I'm talking about are, I'm talking about when people tend to leave the relationship when the spark is no longer there, when the social value has diminished. And of course, um, in those particular cases, the first thing that the dumper wants to do is they want to reinforce this notion in their head that they made the right decision which of course explains this specific stage in life where basically they will go out and start exploring the various options that are available. Of course, um, in these stages, the number one mistake that people tend to do is they tend to reach out during these stages. And of course, if you're um, dealing with someone who tends to be avoidant and you reach out too soon, you're going to be dealing with a high level of resistance because this person is going to still want to be living that lie. They're still going to want to um, reinforce the notion that they are better off without you. The third stage that tends to follow is nostalgia and comparisons. So eventually the dumper will start dating other people and what they will start noticing immediately or if not close to immediately is that these comparisons with other people usually are tend to be very black and white. Either the person they're dating is amazing and they will live up to the expectation or they don't. But what will eventually happen as time progresses is the honeymoon phase of this person that they tend to date, assuming of course um, it is someone that tends to spark this emotional reaction in them, tends to be 
diminishing over time. And this is where the comparisons will start ha happening. All of a sudden, this new person they're dating might not be as loyal as you were. They might have not shown the same level of emotional maturity as you did or emotional support. And by no means is one person particularly perfect. We all tend to have our flaws. We all tend to have our imperfections. But when we're going through comparisons, specifically with the people we date, we tend to embrace the positive aspects of a person over time. This is, of course, what we tend to call the positive affirmation bias, where all of a sudden when something that was positive in our lives is no longer there, we will constantly compare it to it and say, you know what? This person was good in many senses, but maybe not so good in other senses. But those not so good attributes that were contributed to the relationship will slowly start diminishing. And in fact, most people after a period of months, if not years, won't even remember the negative qualities of you. This is, um, again, going back to that positive affirmation bias where most people tend to internalize the positive emotions and externalize the negative emotions over time. After the whole concept of nostalgia and comparisons comes a level of neutrality. The dumper doesn't feel hate towards the dumpy, but also doesn't feel any level of positivity either. This is a concept that most people, when they start going through this specific stage, specifically as the dumpy, will sort of come to me and will tend to say, you know what, Marcos, I really don't feel positive, but I don't feel negative towards the specific thing. And what I usually tell people is this is a perfectly normal emotion to be feeling at this given moment because what it's showing you is it's showing that these comparisons that you're making towards your ex and this notion of being able to put this ex on this pedestal is slowly starting to come back down to earth and more than likely what you will start seeing is you will start seeing the chinks in the armor the flaws that this person brought to the table so if you were with someone who's let's say very emotionally uninvested or emotionally very distant this will be something that you'll sort of start coming to terms with it. Not in the concept of a negative way, but in the concept of you fully understanding that this person that left you had their own series of flaws. And it's because of these flaws that both of you, on both perspectives, with the contribution of each of you, weren't able to make the relationship work. And of course, they were the brave one in the sense that they were the first to pull the trigger on this breakup. At the same time, um, them pulling the trigger doesn't make them better than you. It just basically states that they decided at that specific moment to give up on the relationship. And of course, giving up on the relationship has its own merits too, especially if you're in a very toxic situation. But if it was a situation where things were relatively going well, um, and maybe the conflicts were tend to have been exaggerated from one party or another. Um, these are the times where that particular person is really going to go through that reflection of uh, really understanding what the relationship was really about and understanding what eventually will come as a result of that. The last and final stage is regret and in some cases sadness, although that sadness usually tends to come in other emotional aspects depending on the attachment style. So eventually exes will come to a conclusion that says, you know what, I kind of regret the way I acted in this relationship or even I regret ending the relationship depending on what kind of situation they find themselves in. Now, unfortunately for us, human beings are uh, tend to be creatures of emotion. So if they are in a new relationship where their emotional needs are being satisfied, the likelihood of regret being part of the equation isn't going to be that, that large. At the same time, um, if you happen to have had a very intimate relationship with this person, even if it was something, uh, someone as uh, avoidant as a dismissive avoidant, for example, these specific cases, the individual will start going through those comparisons in the neutrality phase. And of course, that will eventually spark into a level of regret. Now, this level of regret will also equally be contributed to a level of denial, depending on the type of person you're dealing with. And everyone says the same thing, which is, of course, my ex is incredibly stubborn. My ex is never coming back. Well, earlier today, I, I sort of had a friendly bet with someone on the Discord where I said, um, because of the quarantine situation, one, thir one third of people I've heard from their exes. And people sort of challenged me on that. There's like, there's no way it's that high. So I decided to put my money where the, my, my mouth where my money was. And of course, I put up a specific survey on the disc or not on the discord on my YouTube channel and asked people a very specific question. How many of you have heard from your exes? And these were broken down into four separate categories. I haven't heard from my ex at all. I've heard from my ex and they just wanted to talk. 
I've heard from my ex and they wanted to get back together and I decided to reach out to my ex. Now, if we were going to remove part of the equation that says I haven't heard from my ex, that's about 60% of the equation. We're left with roughly about 40% of which um, one third of those people or 9% of that um, percentage were people that decided to reach out to their ex. So overall, we're dealing with a success rate of about 31% of people that have heard back from their exes. Now, in most cases, exes that have reached out have said they just wanted to talk. And I will tell you that rarely ever happens. It does happen in some scenarios, but in most cases, what you're actually dealing with is you're dealing with the indirect direct approach as Craig Kennick talks about, which of course has to do with the notion that when an ex does reach out for indirect reasons, it usually has very little to do with the subject matter, more to do of sort of seeing what your relationship's all about and where you happen to stand in a specific situation. So everyone talks about their ex being stubborn in these situations, and yet we are at a specific time where the likelihood of an ex reaching out because of the amount of time they're spending in the neutrality phase because of course they're in isolation is actually hasn't been higher ever in my opinion in human history never in history have we had access to this level of technology by while simultaneously being in this level of isolation now does that mean that your ex is going to reach out not necessarily um a lot of these factors have to do with circumstances. So if your ex does eventually reach out, there is one truth that has to come into play. And the truth is they have to be miserable and you have to be happy or at the very least give off the impression that you're happy. Those are the only circumstances an ex will reach out for a rekindle ship. Unfortunately, um, people that reach out in levels of sadness in times of quarantine um, that is a very fear-based emotion, and as the quarantine tends to get lifted, um, those people that do reach out in those specific situations may have that attraction diminish because all of a sudden that fear-based anxiety or that fear-based emotion is no longer part of the equation. So I usually tell people, be cautious um, with individuals that reach out during this time of quarantine. Make sure that their intentions are correct. Make sure that you can emotionally handle that situation, and if you're lucky, um, you can actually take this specific situation and turn it to your advantage by saying, look, we've all been dealing a trauma with traumatic experiences right now in isolation. And through these traumatic experiences, we're all going through internal growth and internal reflections. I know that one of my close friends who tends to be a fearful avoidant is going through his own reflections. And he, his immediate re reaction is, I need to find someone to be with. And I keep telling him, no, 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 no. You need to take advantage of this moment of these emotions that you're feeling right now because these feelings will provide perspective in the long haul. Now, by no means do I suggest staying in depression or staying in anxiety. You should probably seek out a therapist um, or seek someone out, whether that's me or someone else that is more resonant towards you, remains to be seen, but you should have someone that you can talk to that is not directly associated to your social circle where you can filter out these emotions and get perspective from them. Um, Trauma is a very good tool in that aspect where it does allow you to reflect on a much deeper subconscious level. And of course, as your dumper or as the dumper or your ex goes through these five stages, which eventually will lead to their emotional sadness, it's then and only then that you can actually rekindle something and actually build something more solid. I've said in the past that most relationships that get back together in most cases, not in all, but in most, and stay together, usually had another relationship in between. And there's a very strong reason for that. The reason for that is that that relationship allows the comparisons to take place, which eventually leads to the neutrality, which eventually leads to the regret and the sadness, which is something that they have to experience. I can't emphasize this enough. You cannot lecture your ex on the stages that they're about to go through. Take it from someone who's tried. It doesn't work they have to experience it themselves. I hope that this, um, <laughs> this tutorial or this lecture was uh, insightful for you. If you liked it, I would ask that you hit like at the bottom of this video. Um, if you like my channel, I would ask that you subscribe because we're always building people and we want to build a community here. And as always, I will include a link to the Discord as well as my website if you're interested in joining our general discussion. Um, talking about breakups, goals, or other hobbies. I know a number of us uh, play video games together, so we're always looking ways to connect in this time of quarantine. And then, of course, um, if you are looking for some personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, I will include a link in the description to my website uh, in the description below that will allow you to get into contact with me. 
With that being said, um, I hope you enjoyed this specific video. This is Clutch, signing off.